Hi guys, welcome back to Geography Explained Online. We're here with you today for another skill. Actually the first part of what may become a, will become a three part episode all about synoptic charts. So we seem to be having a lot of weather today. Sorry what? The, the weather, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of weather. Unlike yesterday. I don't think, I couldn't, I don't think any weather happened yesterday. Okay, so today there's a lot of atmospheric condition happening, mm. unlike other, other days. Mm. So really good opportunity for us to look at what's going on in our atmosphere. Um, and we can do that by having a look around. It's pretty overcast, mm. it's a bit of wind. Is there a type of map that would help us to understand all of that wind and overcastness and all the other bits of weather we might encounter from day to day? Well, Sizio, yes, there is. Oh, well, that was lucky. <laughs> lucky there we is. We are going to be introducing you guys today to synoptic charts. You've definitely seen these on the news. You probably even looked at them in class, but there's so much we can do with them. So we're breaking it into three parts. Mm -hmm. Coming at you now with part one, synoptic charts. Strap in for this. Okay guys, we're inside now and we're going to start taking you through some of the key features of synoptic charts. If this looks kind of familiar to you already, it's probably because it has similar lines and features to what we look at when we look at a topographic map. So um, yeah, and they all connect. In this case, so we're connecting areas of equal air pressure rather than areas of equal height. So mm -hmm. isobars, if you want to think of it, are kind of like the contour lines of the sky. Technically, for you really technical geographers out there, they're both a type of ISO line map which True. is any map yeah. that joins something of equal value with a line, ISO line, ISO bar, very good. So what is air pressure? Is well, air pressure, so the air around us, you often may have heard the term out of thin air. Air isn't that thin. It, but it is, it's, I can't I, feel it. Ah, it's, yeah, it's, well, it turns <laughs> out that the, the air around us, I mean the whole planet, weighs about five million billion tonnes. That is a five with 15 zeros after it. That's heavy. All. It's heavy. It's very heavy. heavy. Yeah. So when it gets it's like moving. It's weighing me down. Well, it's also weighing you up because it's weighing you from every direction all at the same time. <laughs> so that move, that air, that five million billion tons is actually very unevenly distributed. It's unevenly distributed because of the heat of the sun. The sun warms one bit of the earth. It rises because warm things rise. And then there's no air left, so air has to move in to fill the hole that just went. But the warm air that rose, it cools down because it's up above, and it's it so settles exciting. down. I'm, I get very, very excited. Like, do it right, air pressure. I know, I know, very I know, I know. So the sun's making all this air move around. That air, that movement of air, basically causes all of the weather. So sometimes there's areas of high pressure where there's a lot of air, and sometimes there's areas of low pressure where there's not a lot of air. How do we understand all of that happening? with a map like this, with our synoptic chart. This is a synoptic chart, everybody, or a weather map, some people call it, we prefer mm. synoptic chart. Yeah, technical. 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 Um, and you can see here already, we're gonna go more in depth about high and low pressure systems next video, but you can see some already with the L and the H. So here's our low and high pressure systems. Fun fact, H does not mean hot. No, uh, oh my gosh, no. We'll get into that next mm. video, don't stress. So when we look at a synoptic chart, we're looking at barometric pressure, just like on a topographic map, we're looking at height, on this map, we're looking at areas of high and low barometric pressure. And when we do that, we find the number that's on the line and we write that down in hectopascals, just like on a contour map, you would use meters, or if you're looking at temperature, you'd use degrees. So hectopascals, little h, big P, little a, is our unit of measurement. The other thing that is somewhat similar to a topographic map is you also need to work out what is the interval between each isobar because it's not always going to be shown, every single isobar is not always going to be labelled. Mm. And every um, uh, topographic map that you see won't all use the exact same interval. Some will be eight apart, some will be three apart, uh, two apart, usually an even number, but you can't just rely on it being definitely two, four, six, eight, or 10. So what you need to do is find an area where there's a few that are clearly labelled and work out it from there. So what I'm gonna do here is look here, we've got 1016, then we miss a line, then we've got 1024. So from that, I can work out it's eight hectopascals between those, but there's one in the middle. So that means that every isobar, we're going up or down, depending on the pressure system, by four. Mm -hmm. What can we tell Sizio from these isobars? Why are they important? Excellent. Well, uh, we can tell primarily just at a glance how hard or fast the wind is likely to be blowing in any one area. The reason is, because if we've got low pressure up here at 1,008 and high pressure down here at 1,030, 
The only way that's possible is that the air pressure has changed. So air pressure essentially always wants to move from fast to, oh, sorry, from high to low. It's like the inside of a balloon, the air wants to get out because the air pressure inside the balloon is, is, gets higher and higher. So the air wants to move from high to low. Now, if the air pressure is changing quickly, that means the air must be moving quickly between those two places in order to even itself out. And that's why the air pressure is changing so quickly. So when you see close isobars together, that means pretty much always that the air must be moving quickly between those points. Excellent. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do next is show you how this you'd go about answering this in an exam. This comes up all the time, seven to 10, as well as in the HSC. Yeah. So we'll take you through a few uh, questions that you might get. Yeah. Super common question, this one. Straight up, pretty easy. You'll get a location on a map. I've put Perth on here. Maybe it's a little bit high up, but it's close enough. Um, so the dot, the P, P mean is Perth. So what is the barometric pressure of Perth? It's literally as easy as it looks. You find the line that Perth is on, you go across until you find the, it written, 1024, and it's as simple as that, that's the answer. Sometimes if you had it on a line in between, for example, you'd find, as Samantha said earlier, it might not be exactly on the line, but you have to work out what the difference is there, and that's all you have to do. So Perth, 1024. What about a harder one? How would we get harder than that? Well, sometimes, I know, magic, sometimes they're going to give you a point that maybe is between two isobars. So an example here is Cairns. Cairns seems very familiar. Do we go there? I think yeah. we, do we go to Cairns? I think we've got a lot about it. So do we take all of our senior, senior students to the Great Barrier Reef? Do we swim with turtles? Do we, did I scuba dive on the Barrier Reef? Do we miss Wally? I think we met Wally. Go Wally. see Wally in our vlog. we we'll link at the end, right hand corner, go find it. Wally's a fish. So, uh, Cairns, just here, this dot here. If you're asked to find that, really important, we can't estimate, okay? We need to work out what isobar is either side of that point. So we're giving a range. Mm -hmm. So we go the isobar up the top first, and we follow it around, we've got to follow it all the way around here. And we see it's not actually labeled, but we've gone 1,024, 1,020, 1,016. So this one's going to be another four down. Because it's getting lower as we move out of that high pressure system. So this one's going to be 1,012. So we're between 1,012 and 1,016 because we're moving in towards a high pressure system. Really important thing, because Cissio has done a great job of writing out those things, but in an exam, we always have to put our units of measurement. So after 1,012, 1,016, we need to put in hectopascals. And this is done with a little h, a big p, and a little a. Bit of a weird one, but you've just got to remember it. And that's how we find our barometric pressure when it's between isobars. Oh, so, but the, so it is the range rather than... Oh, yeah, point. sorry. Didn't finish off my thought there. Sorry, so that's we, what I'm, we work as a team <laughs> so what you need to, to write, do all the geography. What you need to write as your answer is that the barometric pressure here is between 1,012 and 1,016. Or you could write it as being greater than 1,012, but less than 1,016. It's in that range. And we put hectopascals on the end, and we're done. All right, now you know exactly how to read isobars on a synoptic chart. You can tell what the weather is without even having to come outside. Mm, whether or not you go outside. <laughs> nice day out here though, absolutely lovely. Although, you know what, I am feeling a little chilly. We'll see you next week for part two. Part two of how to uh, read Sno a synoptic, synoptic chart. chart. You gonna eat that? I'll, I'll eat, you go, you eat a bit okay. and then I won't eat a bit. See you next week, Geo Squad. Make sure you like us on Instagram at geography underscore explained underscore online. Like this video, subscribe, tell all your friends, get everyone on board. Uh, we need some Geo love. Pascal, but more hectic. <laughs>